Hello, movie friends. Welcome back to the show. Anthony here. And James here. Today, we're going to do something a little fun. We're going to not focus on a movie or anything. What we're going to focus on is the best movie cameos of all time. And so we generated a pretty epic list of pretty much all the cameos we could think of and find on the internet of movies and it's pretty stacked there's some surprises in there and maybe some you haven't known about but many of the most common ones that you see on social media or you talk about with your friends and everything like that and i think this will be a lot of fun we also found some ones that you might not have ever heard of so i'm very curious for you to hear those as well and uh, I, we put this kind of in an order of like the funniest most surprising like if you saw it in the theater and saw this cameo, it was really surprising to you. So I think the most impactful is kind of how we ordered this. And we have like 60 cameos. So yeah, there's like three been, or four pages. There's been a ton of really incredible movie cameos in the past. And so uh, we can't wait to uh, share this list with you. And now a cameo, it's defined literally a movie cameo as a brief appearance or voice part of a well-known person in a work of the performing arts or in a movie. So not something where it's like the first role of somebody in their career and they're only in it for like a couple minutes. That's not a cameo. A cameo is it's already an established famous celebrity, musician, actor, athlete, whatever, and they're thrown into this hilarious or just random mini role, mini part. Sometimes it's for a couple seconds. Sometimes it's for a few scenes or, or a minute or two for an entire scene. But it's it's kind of you know ambiguous in terms of like the exact definition of, of like what are the the requirements of a cameo. Yeah, I, when doing research, I saw plenty of lists had like an actor or, or actress who's very famous, but when they were in like a certain movie in a small role, they, nobody knew who they were. So yeah. that doesn't qualify as a movie cameo. That's just an early role. So that it, it has to be the person was already famous when they're in the cameo. Exactly. So why don't we just dive right into it? Let's go. How's that sound to you? You want to lead us off, Anthony? I would love to. All right, lead it off. And so I think the one of the most surprising and hilarious cameos uh, ever was Michael Jackson's cameo in Men in Black 2. Uh, I think it was so shocking for audiences and just a lot of fun to see him in this role. Uh, and he wanted to be in this film. He thought he was like perfect as someone who like could be perceived as like an alien. <laughs> Which I think is just great for him to like, to, you know, be in a fun play, role play like that. Play, play, play yeah. you, know, all the, you know, I'm sure he knows about all the, all the jokes people were making about him. This is 2002, obviously. Before still the biggest pop star in the untimely, world. Yeah. The biggest star in the world, probably yeah. still. And so it's just really fun that he was taking roles like this and just having fun with his celebrity and his intense fame, which rivaled probably no one, I, I think, since his passing. Yeah, you Michael know? Jackson at his peak was probably the most famous person in terms of an entertainer in history. For an entertainer, had to be, yeah, yeah, absolutely, probably still, you know. I'm trying to remember in the first one, did Will was Will Smith like guessing like did he mention Michael Jackson as like because remember when he's talking talking to Kane, he's like listing off people who think he thinks could be celebrities, maybe could, could be oh, aliens. I seen it in a while. I, know I, think, I think that's what about. really made the cameo work. I think that might be what happened. Maybe possibly. That's a good good question. Someone fact checked us on that. Fact yeah. checked us on that and let it, get back to us. I'm sure someone's like, oh, have your people contact, contact our, our people, people, which is in the YouTube comments or Instagram DMs. Moving on, I'll take it up next with <laughs> taking the mantle. Taking the mantle, Matt Damon. Uh, he's got a few cameos. I think our favorite cameo of Matt Damon is in Euro Trip, and Euro Trip's just a silly, fun, like uh, high Raunchy. school college comedy. Came out what like fifteen years ago. These yeah. these friends just go on a trip to Europe. To the the lead has a crush on a girl. He's like, oh, he broke up with his, his girlfriend. He's gonna go find her in Europe. It's American Pie in Europe, basically. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's a good time. Miscuzzi, miscuzzi. It's pretty raunchy. It's pretty. It's pretty ridiculous. It is. Very, it was very funny. But Matt Damon plays his the guy's girlfriend's secret lover boyfriend, and he's like a death metal singer, and he sings that song. Scotty doesn't the, know, yeah. and he's got like a shaved head, and he's the mo so ridiculous. And it seemed like Matt Damon had so much fun yeah, with this. He's got piercing and, and tattoos, and he's in like the punk rock outfit. It's ridiculous, and like he didn't want to be credited for it. He just did it for fun. I, I believe he was friends with the filmmakers, and that's why he did it as like a favor to them. But it was like one of the most shocking, hilarious cameos of all time. And another Matt Damon cameo is most recently in Thor Ragnarok, where he plays uh, Loki as like a the actor a, playing the, Loki, the acting play telling of Loki's story as Lo when Loki is pretending to be Thor and Loki's father at the time to, in leading and in, in ruling over Asgard. And he's just watching this hilarious play. And also the actor who plays opposite him playing Thor in the play is actually 
Chris Hemsworth's older brother, Luke Hemsworth. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And then Matt actually has like four on this list. He's also with Ben Affleck and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back when they redo the uh, the Goodwill Hunting scene with the guy at the Apple bar. Applesauce, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> because rather than like uh, showing the guy off with his intelligence in the bar, he just shoots him with a shotgun. <laughs> and it's the same actor from Goodwill Hunting, the 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 douchey yeah. yuppie guy. It's so funny. Oh and, my god. And then Gus Van Sant. They turn to Gus Van Sant, and he's sitting in the corner in a director's chair, counting a bag of money. Oh, yeah, they're like, what do you think about that, Gus? And he's like, hey, I'm busy, guys. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, like, stacks of cash around him. <laughs> so, yeah, great cameo by Gus Van Sant in there. It's such a funny scene. He's not, he's not even the only director on this list. And mm. also, one last Matt Damon one. He's also in Deadpool 2. He plays one of those, like, southern guys that's at the pickup truck, and he's got, like, a beard and, and like, a hat and everything. Fat suit, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, a little bit of a... a, a Full bodied suit, yeah. all right. They're, they're, we don't say fat anymore. Oh, shit, sorry, sorry. <laughs> just kidding. And so that I think wraps up Matt Damon on this list, right? Yeah, I don't. Have, I yeah, those are all of them. Man, he has a ton of cameos. He, he's like top three of cameos on this list. Yeah, and they're all great. And next up, we have one of my favorite cameos of all time, uh, Will Ferrell as Chaz in Wedding Crashers. Yeah. <laughs> and this is so hilarious because like. He's not in the trailer. The me love. Me love. Mom. Mom the me love. <laughs> and then <laughs> Owen Wilson just shows up at his house because he's like the legendary wedding crasher who taught Vince Vaughn's character the whole thing and then who passed it on to Owen Wilson. So he's like the legend, the myth. Chaz, right? Chaz. <laughs> Chaz something. <laughs> Um, and then he gets to his house and he lives with his mom and like he <laughs> lives in a bathrobe. <laughs> he's like a girl he met at a funeral. He's, yeah. saying, he's like, he's like, I don't even go to weddings anymore. I go to funerals. <laughs> grief, <laughs> grief is the strongest aphrodisiac. There's just in so much need of solace. You got to come with me sometime. And it's, dude, he's so funny in this. And this is like prime Will Ferrell. And like you said, not in the trailer and just pops up near the end of the movie. And everyone in the theater was like, oh my God, it's yeah. Will Ferrell. This might even be before like, um, uh, he was after. Anchorman. I think it was the same year. I think yeah. Wedding Crashers and Anchorman. Both it was before Talladega Wait, Nights. Anchorman's 2004, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Then, then this is 2005, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so this was even this was before um, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. So he had he had just done uh, old Zoolander, old school Anchorman. And so he was just like On, exploding. He was the yeah. biggest comedy uh, movie star in the world for yeah, sure at great that time. 10 years. Man, what a nice He's So funny. All right, next up we have Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. And so... We, when we were making this list, we were almost not putting him on this list in this role because he has a lot in this in this role. He's got he's in like four scenes or something yeah, like that. Maybe more, yeah. But then we figured like let's have just fun. Like who like it's a cameo because he's so disguised. I think that also attributes it to being such a cam like a cameo role, even though he might have the more screen time of all the cameos on this list. But him as the agent in in Tropic Thunder is just beyond funny. Yeah, I think that if we made this list and didn't have him on it, I think people would be like, "Where's Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder?" It's 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 really an unbelievable cameo, and he's so funny. Uh, I mean, the guy he's only done comedy really in through his cameos. This and another one we'll show we'll talk about in a bit, but it, his character Les Grossman is hysterical. He's got the big hands. He's got the the suit, uh, the beard, the, the bald hairy head, forearms, the huge the huge fingers, and uh, Tom Cruise. He went to Ben Stiller and he's like, if I'm going to do this, I want to wear a suit. I want giant hands full covered in hair and I want to dance. And so it was, it was Tom Cruise's idea to be like dancing to like uh, uh, top 40 songs the whole time. It's it's such a great character. And I think we all know who he based it off of probably you yeah. know, these, those Hollywood execs. We won't, you know... He, we won't say his name because he doesn't deserve to have his name on this podcast ever again, probably. But, you know, Tom Cruise, it, it just I think it shows you. He, even though everyone, th a lot of people think he's crazy, a lot of people don't like him. Say what you want about him, he still loves making movies. He loves entertaining people, and this is just such a fun thing for someone like an action star to do. A hundred percent. And also, stay on Tom Cruise. Uh, another great Tom Cruise cameo is in Austin Powers' Gold Member. He plays Austin in that trailer at the beginning of the opening of the movie, which is just absolutely hysterical because he parachutes down <laughs> onto the Shagwar. And then he he, he 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 hits the booster seat. He does a front flip out of the booster seat with Uzis and shoots a helicopter at the same time. Lands on his feet and then gets Gwyneth Paltrow at the end. The best thing about it is is like they don't show his face like in a close up. So you do, you think it's Austin Powers, Austin yeah. Powers, like Michael Myers doing it. 
And then the first time you see him is when he's he lands and then the camera pans over to him and then Tom Cruise turns around and he takes the glasses off and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> I think him landing on his feet is yeah. the best part because he <laughs> flies like 40 feet in the I air. Get it, I get Front flip over the helicopter while shooting Uzis at it. <laughs> the helicopter shot is my favorite when he's over it and sh- just flipping over and it. And then it just blows up. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and so the girl funny. on the motorcycle, she blows up, but then she's fine the next shot. <laughs> the, the, the helicopter helicopter shoots a rocket at her she explodes and then we see her riding the motorcycle still afterwards it's amazing and then it ends up being gwyneth paltrow who that's a cameo for her too and then also what's st- her name in it um Oh my god! And it's uh, Dixie Normus. Dick, Dixie Normus. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Miss Normus. <laughs> oh my god! Austin Powers, man. And then Steven Spielberg also has a cameo in this scene where he's directing the movie. And then Austin Powers, Mike Myers is like, "Well, I have some thoughts." And then he's like holding his Oscar. He's like, "I think this will should sell you that. I think it's all right the way it is." <laughs> and Danny DeVito also plays Mini Me. And he's like yeah. shooting, shooting machine gun, <laughs> smoking a cigar. And then uh, Kevin Spacey is Doctor Evil. Man, very funny scene, ridiculous. What what a great opening to a movie. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the best cameos ever. Next on this list is in Zoolander, which contains a ton of cameos. Probably the best amount of great cameos in this movie, more than any other movie. But I think the number the highlight of it was David Bowie showing up for the walk off, where it's just like. You're in this movie, and you're like, yeah, there are a couple of like famous celebrities, like you see Winona Ryder, Billy and, Zane, and Billy Zane. But then David Bowie just shows up, and he's gonna judge the walk off. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, it's ridiculous. It's just the concept of yeah. a walk, like an underground model walk off, is hysterical. But then to have David Bowie iconically hosted is great. But also, like on the red carpets, they I don't know how they must have filmed it if they were already at red carpet. It was an event already, so yeah. they just had like Natalie Portman, Winona Ryder. Uh, well, no, so Natalie. It's great because she's like she has a crush on Zoolander, yeah. and she's like, "Did he say anything? Does he does he like know about me?" But then when Nona Ryder is like talking to him in the club, and then Derek goes, uh, "I'd really like to continue talking about this conversation, but I have to go pee." <laughs> <laughs> is that Natalie Portman? Or is it someone? That's else? Winona. Oh, Winona Ryder. Yeah, Winona. Right. He's like, I-, "I have to pee, but I'd really love to continue talking about this conversation." <laughs> <laughs> you should listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's, he's a cool, a, he's dude. a cool guy. <laughs> I, and I think the company is amazing. It's, yeah, he's so funny as a hand model. <laughs> Another one of those roles where he's in multiple scenes and for a good amount of time, but like the the appearance change in the costuming and makeup make yeah. it make it a cameo. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which but why male models? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I just told I just, you why. I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Justin Theroux as the breakdance fighter guy. The, oh, the, that's, the, that's the, Justin the, Theroux. Is that really? Yeah. I don't think I ever noticed that. I haven't he seen co- it in a while. He, he, he wrote um, a couple of Ben Stiller's movies. Yeah, and he directed Tropic Thunder. Yeah. No, no. He, co- he, he, wrote, co-wrote. he wrote it. Stiller directed it. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Um, but he and, he and Theroux have been friends forever. So he's the guy in the dreads who does the DJing and breakdance fighting. And then you have... Uh, John Voight and Vince Vaughn as Derek's brother and father yeah. with the puffy hair. Let's see Paul <laughs> Allen's card. <laughs> All right. Now, before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost Podcast is to become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast, where you get awesome perks like our podcast schedules. You're the first ones to see it, so you would have known this episode was dropping today. Personalized video, pa- pa- videos, Patreon shoutouts, and bonus episodes for all patrons as well as Godfather tier Patrons get their own specific personalized bonus episode that they get to pick. We've had great episodes that our Godfather patrons have picked. We also have one that we have to do for a day in the life of Juno, which should be a lot of fun for a Godfather patron. We also just launched our podcast, Masterclass Online Course. So for anyone who wants to start a podcast or improve their current podcast, our 22 chapter 46 video lesson course will give you all of the secrets behind the scenes of our show. The link is podcastmasterclass.teachable.com or just go on our website, Raiders of the Lost Pod... Lost Pod... <laughs> Lost Pod, Raiders of the Lost Podcast.com. It's right there on the homepage. You can see all our merch, custom movie posters, content. Fall, subscribe wherever you're listening. Thanks so much for tuning into the show and using our coupon codes. Those all really help keep the lights on. Now, let's get back into best cameos of all time. Now, would you like to take it off with this one? I would love to. Oh, I know. It's my turn, right? Go for it. You did Zoolander. All right. <laughs> so, speaking of Tropic Thunder, there is a fantastic cameo in this besides Tom Cruise and even like McConaughey's kind of a, not really a cameo I wouldn't say but he's just a fun huge actor to have in that small role but Tobey Maguire 
in Tropic Thunder. He's in the trailer. In the opening of the movie, there's the three trailers for for each of the actors. There's the, there's the one with Downey's character with Tobey Maguire. Burt and, Lazarus. Yeah, Burt Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three-time Oscar winner Burt Lazarus in MTV's Best Kiss Award winner, Tobey Maguire. <laughs> and it's called Satan's Alley. And, and they're not priests, but are they brothers of a church and they fall in love or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah, I don't think they're priests, but yeah, they're, I think they're the, the next step down. And it's just it, the music is so funny. It's like it's like nineties like heartthrob music. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. It's so damn funny. It's an amazing trailer. I, all those trailers were so much fun. Like seeing that in the theaters for the first time, you're like, because we didn't know that that was gonna be trailers. Yeah, opening with trailers. Yeah. Like, who left the refrigerator door open? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. Again. Love it. Love it. Next up. I think one of the, I think one of the most iconic cameos of all time is Mike Tyson in The Hangover, and I think this really sold people in the trailer um, because during the Phil Collins song, like the drum, he knocks out. Yeah, he knocks out Ed um Ed Helms. It's so funny. I almost called him Andy Dwyer. Well, it's a good point because of the three of them, Zach Galifianakis. Uh, Bradley, Bradley Cooper and then Ed Helms they weren't super famous None of yet them were. Yeah. this was like what st- propelled them all to hu- superstardom in the mm-hmm. comedy world then in Bradley as a dramatic actor because Ed Helms was on The Office but not like he was just Andy and remember The Office yeah. before it was on Netflix was not even the most popular show on TV so mm-hmm. you're right I think Mike Tyson was probably the biggest draw oh, and absolutely. the trailer was great it's the funniest part of the trailer and it like people everyone was referencing that yeah. and it's he's great in it he, he his two scenes are really hysterical I really love when actors are famous people play themselves in movies. I think yeah. it's just a lot of fun. Like the next cameo we have on here is Bill Murray, who plays himself in Zombieland. Excellent cameo. Shows up not in the trailer like 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 the other um, Yeah, not in the trailer. Like what's his name? Like Mike Tyson. Like Mike Tyson. No, Mike Tyson. I meant um Will Ferrell and Wedding Crashers. Mm-hmm. But a huge iconic and funny part of the movie where he's playing Bill Murray in the zombie infested world and he just does makeup and dresses like a zombie so that he can survive and blend in and he like golfs by himself as a zombie it's really funny yeah and he acts like his, his face blown off <laughs> I mean, well, he, you know he gets shot in the stomach oh right? yeah the stomach so, he slowly dies it's his fault yeah. because he's like goes in to scare them as a zombie yeah He's like, uh, practical joking was never my my greatest strength or something <laughs> like that. Which character shot him? Was it Jesse Eisenberg? Yeah, Jesse yeah, Eisenberg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Killed Bur- Bill Murray. He's the scaredy cat of the group. <laughs> but I think that's one of the most beloved cameos. People always reference that one. Yeah. Next up, we have another one of my favorites. Uh, Matthew McConaughey in The Wolf of Wall Street. I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to get us uh, two dirty two martinis, and then five minutes later, get us two more martinis, and then five minutes later, to get us two more, and then after that, just keep bringing them until one of us is on our face. <laughs> Something like that. It's just so good. Those are rookie numbers. Those are rookie numbers. You gotta get those up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing. He's he's such a highlight of that movie, and, and the movie's amazing, and his scene is so memorable. The whole chest beating thing, we've talked about it before. It was all improvised. It's actually an exercise that McConaughey does before every scene he performs in for every movie. It's a vocal exercise to get him prepared um, to smooth out his voice so it doesn't crack like mine does all the time. Maybe you should start doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anthony Maybe comes into sh- episodes recording dry. He doesn't say a word for a half hour. And then he's like, ah, just, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And so he was doing that. And then DiCaprio actually saw him and saw it, thought it was really interesting and suggested to Scorsese, let's put that in the scene and see how it plays out. And so they just, because Scorsese loves improvisation. So they kept it in the scene and it played out like that and it became iconic. And next time you watch it, there's the shot where while McConaughey is doing it, Leo looks off camera and he's, he's like, hey, but he's really just like signaling to Scorsese, like, should we, we should film this, right? And mm-hmm. so that's what's happening off camera. He was prob- that was probably the first intention of like, hey, keep filming. Yeah. Next up, another, these are all iconic. So yeah, all we right. should probably find another synonym to use. <laughs> Bob, they knocked it out of the park. Bob Bark, <laughs> yeah, they knocked it out of the park here. <laughs> Bob Barker in Happy Gilmore, maybe Adam Sandler's funniest movie, most iconic movie for sure, maybe in his catalog. And then Bob Barker just shows up playing himself. They're in the golf tournament together, and it's when Happy's having a very bad day and he's losing his mojo. It's a charity the tournament yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then him and Bob Barker get in that fight, and Bob Barker beats the crap out of him. The Price is Wrong, bitch. <laughs> So damn funny. Oh my god, it's amazing. I love that scene so much. <laughs> now you're gonna get it, Bobby. 
Next to up, next up, we have a movie you and I grew up watching when we were, you know, Puff teenagers. And the Magic Dragon. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> hanging out in middle school with our buddies. Well, not middle school, high school. High school, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, doing some stuff and then watching movies like this. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. It's such a great movie. Great it's, stoner it's great film. Great stoner movie. But Neil Patrick Harris is ridiculous in this movie. He has multiple scenes, but they're all pretty short. And they're just like, there's a couple of moments where he just like passes them by. And he's like, there's a part where he's like driving a car and there's like strippers dancing on on, on top of the car. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like a raging partier, wild card, like out of control guy, which is not what he's like in real life, obviously. But I think it's like they just dialed, dialed it to 11 to just have Neil Patrick Harris, Patrick Harris have fun with himself. Playing himself. Yeah. And it's, it's and great. And this is before How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, I was going to say, because it's very similar to his, kind of like his character in How I Met Your Mother, yeah. always just partying and a womanizer and everything like that. I think like this that. movie got him that role. It, it probably did because it showed like a different side of him because he was, he was always Dookie just Howser. Dookie Howser yeah. for everyone. Everyone just thought he was the, the kid MD. You know, that was that was NPH's like prime. But now yeah. this launched him into being one of the biggest sitcom stars of the last two decades for sure. Yeah, and, Harold, and Kumar, all week, they keep referring to him as Dookie Hauser. Yeah. So that's that was his <laughs> iconic role before How I Met Your Mother, but he is so funny in this. I love Harold and Kumar, too. The, yeah. the sequel's pretty good, too, but this movie all, like wanted me to eat White Castle so bad for the first time. I've never gotten it fresh. I, we used to get frozen, it frozen. Yeah. I'm sure it's not even close to the same, but it was yeah. still like iconic to... to I can stop saying <laughs> iconic. It was great to like get White Castle and watch Harold and Kumar... Well, you know, feeling good. It Did was you good do to, that once? I, you actually, oh, for sure, dude. Uh, that's cool. Absolutely, bro. I've, yeah, I've always been underwhelmed by the burgers. They're so tiny. It's, well, and it's because it's microwaves. <laughs> yeah. You know? I like sliders in general, but, you know, I think frozen microwave burgers is just not the way to go. I do like they have lots of little chopped onions on them. I like yeah. that. All like right. McDonald's. All right, next up. Next you go. up. Yeah. This is one of my favorite comedies of all time. I love this movie so much. This is the end. It's, it's so genius and fun because it's literally just an entire movie of cameos. Even all the, everyone in this movie plays themselves, which is so fun. Um, obviously, the lead actors like like James Franco, Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, Craig Robinson, um, Jay Baruchel, all of them. Who am I missing out on? I think that's that's pretty much everyone. Frank, they, um, uh, what's Danny McBride. Danny McBride. Yeah. So they're all playing themselves, but they're they're not cameos. They're the, they're the lead characters of the film. But then we have a ton of great cameos from Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum, Emma Watson, Rihanna. Paul Rudd, Aziz Ansari, David Crumold, um, Chris Rimmons plays. <laughs> I just <laughs> wrote McLovin. I just wrote McLovin. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Sarah, Jason Siegel, Mindy Kaling. I think Michael Sarah in this movie, it, it might be the hardest I've laughed in like my entire life the yeah. first time I saw him in this role because he did like kind of like NPH did in Harold Kumar, except yeah. way funnier. And he's just like Michael Sarah, who's always just like the sweet, very nice guy in all his roles. He's just a, a cokehead and just like <laughs> an asshole. Who stole my phone? Who stole? This is so embarrassing. All the coke i've wasted on you assholes and this is the thanks i get <laughs> you want to sip sip time sippy sippy time and uh and channing tatum was unbelievable like, I, I can't, love like, him. I, I can't believe he agreed to that it's, um, it's insane but i would say out of all the cameos i would say michael Sarah is my favorite yeah it's it might be one of my favorites on this entire list yeah. in general it's and just, also it's our best performing clip on tiktok my, oh yeah, you're right. The Michael Sarah. He actually really. Yeah. We, we made a clip about him really slapping Rihanna's ass after asking her permission and consent, which she agreed to yeah. only if she could hit him in the face as hard as she as he hit him. Yeah. So every time he hit her for each take, she would get to slap him right in the face. So she actually smacked the hell out of him in that scene. Yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> but that's our best performing clip. All the comments are like totally worth it. Worth it. It's like I don't see anything wrong with this. I would totally do that. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Even all the women are like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> it's almost, I think it's like almost at 10 million views. It's quite it's a our lot. our best one. Pretty good. Anthony, would you say that paying less than $4 a month is a small price to pay for online protection? Yeah, that's nothing. Well, our new sponsor, NordVPN, has you covered. Use our link, nordvpn.com slash Raiders or coupon code Raiders at checkout to get up to 70% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. How's that sound? Sounds amazing. A VPN is a virtual private network that gives you online privacy and anonymity by creating a private network from a public internet connection. All our movie and TV lovers listening, NordVPN also gives you the ability to access streaming services like Netflix, HBO, Hulu, whatever you want, as well as TV and movie content libraries 
from other countries at no extra cost. NordVPN protects your personal data, hides your IP address when you use the internet, and lets you bypass censorship, content blocks, and website restrictions. It's the equivalent of literally buying a cup of coffee just once a month, a small price to pay for premium cybersecurity and access to vast amounts of entertaining content. And there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee if NordVPN is not for you, so there's literally no risk at all. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash Raiders or use the code Raiders at checkout to get up to 70% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. You're basically just getting it for nothing on the, for like pennies on the dollar. That's absolutely insane. And honestly, we've had NordVPN for about a month and a half now, ever since they hooked us up with a subscription. I am never going back to not being protected online. It's like a it's like a breath of fresh air. It's a game changer. I love it. I'm not getting those ads that I see just from you mentioning something near my phone. Or, or if I say toaster near you, you'll get ads for toaster, but not anymore. Not anymore. No, NordVPN. Not anymore. Next up, we have a Tarantino film, Pulp Fiction, with a memorable cameo by Christopher Walken telling the watch story for Bush's flashback to his childhood, talking to his father. It makes us understand why it's so important for him to get the watch off the kangaroo thingy. And Christopher Walken, one of the most... Captain Coons. Captain Coons. One of the greatest actors of all time, just delivering this this the monologue. It's a very dense monologue. He says it perfectly. And also, what's really cool is it's... um He's talking to... Us most of the time, it's like breaking the fourth wall. So Christopher Walken is looking right at us. It really makes us to relate to Butch as the little kid, and it's just a, a fantastic scene in this iconic movie. Well, since iconic, <laughs> you got me saying iconic. we gotta stop it. Sorry, everyone's like, "Say it again! Stop it!" Drinking there are game. Other, there are other words. Drinking game. <laughs> Knocked out of the park. Um, since we're, we just brought Pulp Fiction, why don't we do some more Tarantino movies? So and also Channing Tatum. So actually, so Walken has another cameo in True Romance. Yeah. He has the the gangster. I can't remember his name, but the the head of the mafia family who's interview who's talking to Christian Slater's dad. Tarantino wrote that script. Yeah, uh, Channing Tatum in the Hateful Eight. That's a really great cameo because that happens. You know, I want. He wasn't have, in the marketing. Yeah, and he's. Yeah. He, I think he's in the opening credit role. But if you haven't seen Maybe. that movie, I won't yeah. tell you where he shows up. But he has a great cameo. Zoe Bell in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and also in. Um, the Hateful Eight. So she is the stunt woman of Uma Thurman in all the Kill Bill films and pretty much every movie she's done. She's also in Django Unchained. It's she's part of that crew that, that live in that rundown house on the property, on the candy you're property. You're right. She has the, the mask on. Exactly. She's the woman but you the can, mask. So you can tell from the eyes it's her. And there's actually some more footage of uh, more of more of a, a bigger scene for all of them. And you can tell it's her for sure in that scene. The five, six, seven, eight in Kill Bill Volume 1. They're the band that's performing the woo-hoo, woo-hoo-hoo. That's a real band. Yeah. That's their real song. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephen Wright in Reservoir Dogs. And then we also have... Tarantino himself in Django Unchained. Oh, yeah. As the Australian slave uh, trader. And then in in Tarantino himself in The Hateful Eight, he does the voice of the guy... The voice yeah, he does for narration. the intermission. Yeah. He's like, well, now we're back to our story. Let's see what happened. But someone mm. poisoned the coffee. That's Tarantino. <laughs> yeah. He just alters his voice a little bit. Jonah Hill in Django Unchained. He's one of the guys... Uh, can I get anybody else got another bag for their heads? Or <laughs> I can't see shit in these masks. <laughs> um, Harvey Keitel in Inglorious Bastards, like Anthony said, he's on the radio, mm-hmm. uh, doing the 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 terms for surrender for Mr. Hans Landa. Mm-hmm. Rodney Dangerfield is in Natural Born Killers, which is a script Tarantino wrote, directed um, by Oliver Stone. Nice. And then Bruce Dern was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He's on that ranch. Steve Buscemi in Pulp Fiction as the Buddy Holly waiter. At um, Bob, uh, what's it called? Uh, Jack Rabbit Slims. Jack Slims, yeah. The, and then uh, Franco Nero and Django Unta- Unchained, who was Django in the original Western. Nice. So, oh yeah, that's when he he's the guy who goes, I know how it's spelled. No, he's like the S is silent. He's like, I know. <laughs> all right, excellent, I think, excellent. I think that's like all t- Tarantino's best cameos. Yeah, that I can that I can think of off the top of my head. Next up, we have a Stan Lee cameo. So obviously, Stan Lee has been has had cameos in all the Marvel films up to his death. So that's a ton of movies, great cameos. They've always done a really remarkable job with the cameos. Also, Sony, with their Spider-Man movies before the MCU got up to date, um, they were doing uh, Stanley cameos as well. So Stanley cameos have always been a thing. But the very first Stanley cameo, correct me if I'm wrong, was in a Kevin Smith movie, Mallrats. And what happens is one of the characters played by what's his name i can't remember his name the actor um 
but he the leader the act the leader of the movie he runs he's a big comic book nerd and he runs into Stanley at the mall and he begins asking Stanley for advice about this girl he's trying to date so and Stanley actually has a lot of, a lot of dialogue in the scene yeah it's like a full on conversation and they like walk around the mall it's so much fun to see him in this early cameo so this is 1995 it's the first mm -hmm. movie that he had a cameo in because he had a cameo I was right yeah so yes. you're right he had a cameo in the TV movie The Trial of the Incredible Hulk but yeah like Anthony said he's been in every Marvel movie up to his death as a cameo he's also in um Many of the X Men movies, X Men, X Men Last Stand, Deadpool, X Men Apocalypse, Deadpool Two. He was in the original Spider Man trilogy in all three of those, the Sam Raimi trilogy with Tobey Maguire. He was in the Fantastic Four movies, the Fantastic Four in two thousand five, and then the Rise of the Silver Surfer in two thousand and seven. He's in the Amazing Spider Man films as well. He's in Venom, uh, Venom Out There Be Carnage. He was in Daredevil in two thousand three, Hulk two thousand and three, Man Thing, Big Hero six. He's in that. Uh, he he has a voice post awesomeest performance in Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Um, he was also in coverage for the NBA Finals, and he's just probably the the most cameoed person in the history of cinema. And I don't think it will ever be touched or topped. No way. Plus it's video game appearances, theme park appearances, book appearances. Like this guy has been in so many TV shows, so, so many appearances animated shows documentaries it's insane the amount of credits this guy's been in yeah it's great where i mean they technically probably wouldn't even all be credits because they're cameos yeah so that's really cool the most cameoed person in the history of of entertainment stanley speaking of spider-man there is a amazing cameo in spider-man 2 by bruce campbell and he plays the usher at the theater where peter parker is trying to get in to see mj's play but he's a few minutes late and he's very polite, but also very firm about not allowing Peter Parker inside. It's a terrific cameo. Isn't he in all of the Spider-Man movies? He might be, yeah. Let me double check that. I can't I can't remember what the other... Oh, yeah. So he's the announcer at the wrestling yes, arena. Yeah. So he's the one who... who Ring come, announcer. Yeah, he, he, he comes up with the name Spider-Man because before Peter Parker was thinking of just the amazing spider. No, the, no, human, the, yeah, spider. the human spider. He's like, oh, man, that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, kid? <laughs> and then he's the maitre d... And in the, the, the restaurant, one, he's going to propose yeah. to MJ. Correct. And she had a bad day. Thank you. Because he kissed that girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's pretty shitty what he did. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty yeah. messed up thing. Th you stole our kiss. Did you kiss her or was it Spider-Man? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be pissed if I was her too. That's messed up. Anyways. Bet you went to make pancakes with, uh, with uh, James Harry. Frank. With Amnesia <laughs> Harry. <laughs> what a dumb movie. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right. Next. How's the pie? <laughs> So good. <laughs> that movie could have been great. Anyways, <laughs> Alora. Moving on to Chris Evans in Thor: Dark World. The Dark World. The sorry. Dark World. I skipped sorry. the. the... <laughs> it was my I'm... skim writing. <laughs> it's okay. No one really. This is a skippable movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, the, he plays Captain America, but this is a cameo, real quick role where Loki impersonates Captain America, and it's super fun just for like 10, 15 seconds. Chris Evans is Captain America. Really good scene. It was very. It, I I remember I remember in the theater everyone freaked out when they saw him. Yeah, like, it, it was it, it was, was a lot super, of fun. Yeah, it was very funny to see him. Great cameo. Um next up we have the great Hall of Fame quarterback Dan Marino in Ace Ventura, the pet detective. Uh terrific, terrific film. So funny. <laughs> <laughs> stop I can't stop saying it. All I can do, did you did you almost say it? No, I, I say terrific a lot. Oh, terrific. I've been saying, yeah, I've been saying it way like too it, much. <laughs> we say terrific, fantastic, iconic yeah. way too much. Sorry, guys. And also, my, one of my all-time favorites. We say, it, we say that way too much. <laughs> one of the greatest of all time. But this is one of my favorite comedies of all time. It, it really is. Yeah. Though. And uh, he, he, Doreen, Dan Marino did a pretty good job. Yeah, he's solid. He's not, he's not yeah, bad. Not it. terrible. Yeah, but he has a good amount of screen time. He's really funny. Yeah, uh, laces out, Dan. Laces out, Dan. <laughs> Die, Dan. <laughs> Look, they're little, little footballs. footballs. <laughs> we should do a watch party with Ace Ventura. That'd, that'd be, be a lot great. of fun. Yeah, that'd be great. Next up, we have Brad Pitt in Deadpool. The first one, right? Second one. Second one, Deadpool 2. Jesus, do you even watch movies? You wrote Deadpool. You made. You wrote this list, so that's why I asked, because I'm like, isn't it Deadpool I guess too? that is my fault. Yeah, it is yeah. your fault, because Lucky's in that movie. Hey, I'm going to take the blame for that. You should. Thanks. Appreciate it. Brad Pitt was going to be the character that Josh Brolin played in this film, but because of time constraints, he I couldn't can't remember his name. I can't remember. He couldn't fit into his schedule. Um, so Brad Pitt sh showed up for a day to do a cameo. He's the invisible guy who gets electrocuted. So he's on camera for like three frames and it's really funny. Yeah, it's great. And it's a blink and a miss it thing, but it's worth it. It was in the theater. We were like, 
Brad Pitt. Yeah, it's like the most famous guy alive. You can't even if, even if it was like real quick. It's like was that Brad Pitt? It's like no, that was Brad Pitt. Yeah. I know that face. His requirement for doing it was bu- them buying him a cup of coffee that morning. Must have been a good cup of coffee. Yeah, must have been nice. A couple of pumps of like almond in it from a <laughs> Starbucks or something. I guess so. Whatever he likes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Brad Pitt's coffee order is. Uh, well, I'm curious too. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> We have Robert Downey Jr. in The Nice Guys, the excellent uh, Russell Crowe, and uh, Ryan, I forgot his name, Ryan Gosling movie, uh, directed and written by Shane Black, who wrote and directed Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which was one of Downey's early roles to get him back into Hollywood. He did Zodiac and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang the year after, so it was a big stepping stone for him um, being accepted by Hollywood filmmakers again. So I think he and Shane he always I think he really appreciates what Shane Black did for him giving him a lead role um so when he was very ostracized from Hollywood and so he has a cameo in this movie uh during the party scene when Ryan Gosling's character <laughs> falls off the the balcony cuz he's so drunk and he lands in the in the backyard and he lands next to a tree and then uh when he sits up and he sees that there there's someone sitting against the tree next to him and then when he looks closer and he pulls out his lighter, he sees that it's a dead body just sitting there. And he, like, all holds in vomit. It's very funny. But it's actually Robert Downey Jr. Uh, is that dead body. He's got, like, a mustache or something. Yeah, yeah. And, and they throw him over the fence and he his body lands on the, on the wedding party. Next up, we have a couple of cameos in the Pirates franchise. First is Keith Richards as Jack Sparrow's dad, which is at World's End, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End from 2007. And that's suiting because uh, uh, Johnny Depp it's, <laughs> you used Keith Richards as his inspiration for the performance of Jack Sparrow. Yeah, literally, if you look at a photo of Keith Richards, is Jack Sparrow. If you hear him talk, it's Jack Sparrow. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. And then Paul McCartney has a cameo in Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Lies, which was uh, came out in 2017. Dude, Johnny Depp's got like the coolest friends I know, imaginable. He, plays, he just hangs out with Ro- Rolling Stones and Beatles for real time. He plays Uncle Jack in that film. Yeah, it's great. That's great. It's great. <laughs> Apparently, if Apparently. you're Johnny Depp, you could get the greatest musicians ever in your Pirates to, movies. To be your friends. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old viral video. <laughs> Is that a Vine? It's uh, No, it was after Vine. Okay. Yeah. And next up, we have a horror film. We have the It Chapter 1. And Stephen King has, uh, I think, his most famous cameo to date as the antique shop owner who's reading a Stephen King book. It's a ver- really fun cameo. He, it's a very sweet, like he's sly, he's got a few words, dialogue with the kid. It's really great. He's in a ton of, of movies too. He's, he's got 36 cameos. Night Riders, yeah. Creep Show, Maximum Overdrive, Creep Show 2, Pet Cemetery, Golden Years, Sleepwalkers. Just a ton of cameo credits in his career, mm-hmm. which is great. <clears throat> Next up, we have Daniel Radcliffe in Trainwreck. Really train wreck. Train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, Amy Schumer movie, right? Yeah, Amy Schumer. Um, her and John Cena, her boyfriend, are at the, they're at a movie, and Daniel Radcliffe is an actor in the movie, and he's oh, like it's a dog, dog walker. walker. He's yeah, got, he's walking like twenty dogs. I remember when yeah. that photo came out. Everyone's like, "What movie is Daniel Radcliffe in?" Because he's walking like seventeen dogs. He's got like one of those belt walkers. Too. Yeah. It's like strapped around. And him. then I, yeah. we, I finally saw that movie. I'm like, oh, that's what it's from. But it's, yeah. uh, there's a bunch of great memes that I've made from that because he's like smoking a yeah, cigarette, like watching butt, 12, yeah. do- walking 12 dogs. Mm-hmm. It's great. Next up, we have Alec Baldwin and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. This is an excellent procedural drama. Highly recommended if you haven't seen it. We talked about it before in a few episodes, but Alec Baldwin, great cameo, and he gives a terrific monologue in this film. Yeah, he basically like lights a fire under the asses of the lead characters with like a 15-minute nonstop intense monologue. It's amazing. Next up, we have Dodgeball, which has a few amazing cameos. First, we have Chuck Norris as one of the judges just randomly out of nowhere. He gives that thumbs up of approval. And also uh, Jason Bateman as uh, Cotton. Yeah, as Cotton. Cotton. Yeah. And oh, he- no, he's... Is he Cotton or is the no, other guy? No, he's not. He's not Cotton. He's because because he says Cotton in his yeah. dialogue. Let me see uh, the the character for ESPN ESPN eight the Ocho the Ocho the Ocho. <laughs> What's his character's Pepper name? Pepper Brooks. Pepper Brooks. <laughs> and then Rip Torn is Patches O'Houlihan. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah just, he's great. That's kind of a great cameo too because he's it's like again the disguise cameo, kind of a cameo, not really, but it's just a great little thing too. 
I don't drink. I don't drink urine. I drink urine because it's sterile and I like the Why taste. Why do I drink urine? <laughs> <laughs> is it necessary? Is it necessary for me to drink my own urine? No, but it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> That's the if line. you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Patches Ohula hand. <laughs> All right, moving on. We have uh, Martin Sheen in Hot Shots Part Two, which is the sequel to the first Hot Shots starring Charlie Sheen, and this is basically a, like a spoof of Rambo and Platoon. Uh, Charlie Sheen plays the lead in while while he's traveling through this foreign country on a riverboat, his boat passes by another boat and Martin Sheen's in it. And they both stand up and point at each other, say, I loved you in Wall, Wall Street. Street. <laughs> it's really great. It's, <laughs> it's a good so one. Funny. It's so damn funny. Because he's basically just spoofing his dad in yeah. a movie. It's it's yeah. so good. Um, next up we have Bruce Willis in Oceans Twelve. He plays himself and he's in this film because they're in the middle of the heist of stealing the egg from the museum. And then Bruce Willis is there to accidentally thwart their plans because Julia Roberts is playing a character who isn't Julia Roberts, who is playing Julia Roberts. Yeah, and, he, and Bruce Willis thinks it's really Julia and they're they're personal friends. And yeah. so it, it becomes pretty quick that Bruce Willis is like, Who the hell are you? <laughs> it's it's a great cameo. Next up, we have Martin Scorsese. He's actually cameoed in a lot of his movies, but his his biggest cameo would be in Taxi Driver. He plays uh, the man who ha- who takes uh, Travis's cab to spy on his wife who's cheating on him, and he even tells ta- Travis that he's going to kill this man uh, for sleeping with her, especially because he's a black man. Obviously, he's playing a very racist, cruel character, and this was an accident. Martin Scorsese wasn't planning on doing this, but the actor who he hired was not available something happened for shooting so he had to he had to jump into the scene because there was basically no other choice so he that's why he's in the scene he's like i know the script yeah. i just got to do this i guess exactly and it works really well he's terrific and then we have Alfred Hitchcock in all of his movies. Is <laughs> pretty he, much. Pretty much all of his movies. Yeah. His cameos are generally just like him standing somewhere in the background, like nonchalantly, just like kind of just like looking in the distance and sometimes looking there on camera. Yeah, exactly. It's always funny. Next up, we have Steven Spielberg's Hook, and Glenn Close has an awesome cameo disguised as one of the pirates with a big bushy beard, uh, tons of makeup on. It's really great. Justin Thoreau is actually in The Last Jedi. Um, he's at the oh, casino. He's the casino. He's the guy that they're the, trying to, yeah, yeah the, the pick, the, 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 the lock, the forger, the locker. Yeah, the forger. Or something like that, whatever, the, the decoder. Yeah. Coder guy. Something like that. Yeah, they just got to find He's got a symbol, and they're looking for the symbol, and they find it on him, and, on his pin. Yeah, and then they end up just using Benicio Del Toro because, hey, this is convenient in the yeah. prison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the weakest part of that movie, that whole trip. That's it. <laughs> I, I, the, the weak guess. No, no, I didn't say it's the only weak I know, part. I'm joking. Jesus. Jeez Louise. Jesus. It's iconic. Give me a break. Actually, you know what? Speaking of breaks, while we head on into our intermission. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. The last cameo you want in your life is a little too much going on downstairs. That's why we recommend the Lawnmower 4.0 Groomer from Manscaped.com to take care of your grooming needs. Use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost at checkout for 20% off and free shipping on your entire order today from Manscaped.com. And our friends at Manscaped are turning your shower routine into your favorite part of the day with their brand new ultra premium collection, which is the ultimate wet goods bundle. This bundle comes with deodorants, yes, actual armpit deodorant from Manscaped, body wash, two-in-one shampoo, conditioner, hydrating body spray, and also a free set of Manscaped lip balm. Me and Anthony have been using this package for the last month now, and it's all I'm using every day in the shower. It's fantastic stuff. I smell the best I ever have in my entire life. I'm never going back. Never going back. Plus, finally, chapstick from a men's brand. I love it. It's It's great. It's better than Burt's Bees. (gasps) It's better. Oh, my God. I'm not going back. It's pretty damn good. So we recommend getting on Manscaped.com. Use our coupon code Raiders of the Lost at checkout, and you'll get 20% off your entire order as well as free shipping. And most importantly, you will keep the lights on for the show. Do you love movie posters? If you do, there's no better place to get your posters online than at MoviePosters.com. Be sure to use our promo code Raiders10 to get 10% off your order today. MoviePosters.com has a gigantic selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable and all sorts of posters for each movie and TV show. 
They have a ton of amazing recent releases like new Batman posters, new Spider-Man posters, Uncharted, whatever you're into for movies, they got you covered as well as television. If you're looking at our set online, it is covered with these amazing, high quality, super affordable posters. I couldn't recommend them enough. They have all sorts of sizes. They can do framing, backlighting, whatever your poster needs are. Movieposters.com can't handle it. Again, head on over to movieposters.com and use our promo code Raiders10 to get 10% off your order today. Now, let's head on into our intermission and begin with our movie quote competition. I'll go first. Go first, man. You're not going to be happy unless you're going Mach 2 with your hair on fire. You're not going to be happy unless you're going Mach 2 with your hair on fire. Is that... Is that Fantastic Four? No. Damn it. Mach 2 with your hair on fire. Yeah, I was just thinking Johnny Storm. You want another quote from the movie? Yeah. I was... Inverted. inverted Tom Tuffin. <laughs> Tuffin. That's uh, th- his girl says it in that movie. Ah, uh, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, because he's you know bat in battle with. Boom 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 boom. Take my breath away. <laughs> wow, you're on key. <laughs> I don't know about me. <laughs> I'm tone deaf. I was co- I was on key. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's my quote. But it didn't fall. You caught it. The fact that you prevented it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. Say it again? But it didn't fall. You caught it. The fact that you prevented it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. Tenet? No. All right. I, I'll say the lines before it. Okay. Um, okay. So you caught it. Yeah. Why'd you catch it? Because it was going to fall. But it didn't fall. You caught it. The fact that you prevented it from happening doesn't change the fact that it was going to happen. What is this? I can picture like the it's a ball falling off a table, right? Correct. Oh, it's what a is ball. it's a rubber ball. Not rubber. Ru- it's a ball. It's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give you the maybe I'll give you the uh what the makeup of the ball is, the material. No, no, it's okay. Let It'll me... help. Uh, is it metal? It's wood. It's wood. A wooden ball. Oh, you shouldn't. I yeah, I, I know it. it. That's Minority why I, Report. Yeah, that's why yeah, I want to give the hint. Yeah, that's yeah. too easy, too good of a hit. But yeah. yeah, that's a great quote, man. Thanks. Wow, he stumped me for a little bit. Guess this movie release here, U.S. Marshals, <laughs> nineteen ninety five, ninety eight. I believe the Fugitive. The Fugitive ninety five. Yeah, that's what threw me off. And that's like a great movie because the, U.S. Marshals is a sequel to The Fugitive, and Tommy Lee Jones plays the same uh, in U.S. Marshal. Correct. So fun. he was nominated for an Oscar for the, the Fugitive, Fugitive, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guess this movie release year. Risky Business. I went Tom Cruise this time. I like it. Oh yeah. I knew you would. Nineteen. Love me some TC. I was t- talking to my barber today about Tom Cruise. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gushing. <laughs> yeah. Gushing. Like I hype that man up. Like smiling. No, yeah. I hype him up like I can nobody. Only imagine. <laughs> like I hype him up so much. <laughs> we love him. Our fans know we love him. <laughs> um, nineteen. We gotta do a Tom Cruise episode. We should. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-six. Eighty-three. <sighs> wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Like, that guy's been a movie star for he's almost 60, 40 60. years. Yeah. Movie star for 40 years. Yeah. Insane. It started with Risky Business. That was a big hit. <clears throat> That's like the longest ever streak. Yeah. For like, not just like, like Harrison Ford's still a movie star, but like, I mean, making movies, like the biggest movies of the year yeah. still. Yeah. That kind Regularly of Regularly making them. Yeah. Nuts. All right. Um, Quiz. My movie pop quiz I was time. waiting for you. <laughs> it's like you're waiting. I was until like, like, what happens next? Waiting until like, I was like, <laughs> what's the next part of the show? <laughs> Who directed Blade? David Esquire. No, he wrote it. Oh, f- f- shoot. Um, hold on. Is it a well-known director at all? No. He actually used to work in visual effects and did a visual effects on Aliens and Alien 3. And some prop work. I don't know. Sculpting. St- Alex. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I was going to say Alex Proyas. No, that's not right. Steven Norrington. Thanks for no. Nah, There's no way I was going to ever get that. Four movies, I think, and Blade is the only one I've seen, I believe. Mm-hmm. Great stump. Thanks, man. I was I was never going to get that right. Okay, <clears throat> which Tom Cruise movie is a remake of a famous Spanish film? And bonus points if you can name the Spanish film. Hmm. Good question. 
not Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. It's Jorge Maguire. <laughs> Jorge Maguire. <laughs> no, Jorge Martinez. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. Vanilla Sky. Oh man. Yeah, Good Penelope one. Cruz is even in both of them. Good one. The um, original film is called "Open Your Eyes" in Spanish. So whatever to to Ojas. Good question, man. Stumped me. Stumped me. They actually closed down. Um, uh, what do you call the middle of New York City again? Times Square. They so, closed down Times Square for, oh, for, an, for an hour. Yeah. So that they could get that shot of yeah. him walking through the empty city. Yeah, that's crazy. That was real. All right, let's move on to haters, unsubscribes. What we, we got? We got a bunch today. We got, got a bunch of haters. Yeah. No, a bunch of unsubscribe. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Not any real haters. Oh, actually, I had a hater that I replied to with a TikTok video. So can I do that real quick? Go ahead, man. So get I your, get your uh, get your stress out. It's about Dune. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So, oh no, I didn't see this, did I? I did a response. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> I don't think so. So um, I made a clip on Dune. You must have been fuming. What, um. I, I kept my composure for the most part. I did it very, you know, calmly. Yeah, but I did insides, drop an f bomb. Your insides. <laughs> so I I made a clip where in the Dune episode where we're talking about what the Benny Gesserit are. So I opened the clip with the Benny Gesserit are a pseudo religious organization, and then some Dune sci fi horror. Like I love science fiction, but it's like such a toxic culture, just like kind of like the Star Wars culture. Like the fan base is yeah, the trolls very, can yeah. be very toxic. And so that's what I said. It's a pseudo-religious organization. Then this guy wrote, they are not a religious organization. Man, did no one read these books? They manufacture religions to suit their needs on a particular planet. And so I made a selfie video in front of my bookshelf with my six <laughs> Dune books. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I said a pseudo-religion, which is a, so a pseudo-religion. Then you define pseudo. Yeah, yeah. A define pseudo-religion, which is a philosophy, a philosophy or belief system that has similar aspects to a religion like a founder, uh, faith-based text and faith-based beliefs, which are the Bene Gesserit. They have all that. So I just was, I was like, Sh -sh 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 -sh. did you respond? Suck it. Um, I don't know. I didn't check. What a loser. Well, he might listen. So I don't know. It's still like, like he didn't listen. Was it TikTok? Yeah. He probably doesn't listen. Probably not. Yeah. But still like the first thing I said was pseudo religion. Yeah. And it's just like, you didn't even listen to the video. You just heard the word religion and you just went off. It's just like, so angry. can you watch the clip? So angry. Watch the guys. clip. Why are they so angry? I don't know. Sci-fi culture and, and, and it's like nerd it's, culture, it's man. Funny, it's funny that you make your video and there's six dude books behind you. Because <laughs> uh, anybody read these books? I was like, yeah, I've read the books, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some unsubscribes. So I made a post about who are the best sports movie villains of all time like people like Ivan Drago and White Goodman and stuff and then Johnny White Goodman yeah, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Lawrence from Karate Kid and then um <laughs> Isaac Chavez wrote Johnny Lawrence wasn't a villain unsubscribed technically it was the teacher <laughs> no the I trainer think, I think it's because yeah you're right but I think he was he's, acting he's an antagonist though he's an antagonist but like the villain that last line I don't think you got it fully out oh I will okay. <laughs> it's on my first rodeo <laughs> <laughs> we oh we went out. Well, you just you just sitting there. You didn't say anything. <clears throat> I don't need to. <laughs> but I would say Johnny, Johnny. You could say you could argue he's not the villain of the movie, but the teacher is the villain of the movie. Yeah, for because sure. Because he's just following his instructor's yeah. guide. Yeah, he's, he's he's doing whatever his instructor tells him to do. And I guess what people I, I haven't watched Cobra Kai the show. And it's a toxic teacher. Oh, for you sure. You know what I mean? He wants to hurt people. So uh, if Johnny's <laughs> actually a villain. If you think uh, he's not uh, Johnny's a, a victim. victim, if you think about it, for sure, yeah, yeah. he is a bully though. So great point. But I think in Cobra Kai the show, he's more of like an, a protagonist. Is, yeah, you know, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it either. All right, so um, you posted a video um, about us getting roasted, and then a f official Chris Hansel wrote unsubscribed, boring. <laughs> <laughs> and then Han Servo wrote, just mention me on the next podcast, or you'll both have seven years bad luck. Unsubscribed. <laughs> and then um. And the clip uh, you posted about the Batman theme by Michael Giacchino, Mean Machine 96 wrote, anyone could write a Batman theme, unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> and then uh, Barney Davis wrote, how could you not mention the appearance of the Batman that appears in Titans, the underwhelming show, unsubscribe. <laughs> Thanks, pal. 
<laughs> that's good. That's so that's good. good. What's so funny about the unsubscribe comments is people are like, why are you like unsubscribing from yeah. them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't know it's an inside joke. All right. Top fan of the week is from a five-star review from Selena Tavares. The best film podcast. Absolutely love this podcast. James and Anthony research is so thorough and thoughtful. It's a true pleasure to hear them and you can feel how they love film. I really like the facts, etc. But I also enjoy when they cover all specifics on light, CGI, visual effects, camera movements, etc. As it helps you get a better understanding of the film or of the director actor's intentions. Absolutely recommend listening for people who love learning about films and all the details, fun facts that go into making them. They are also pretty funny. Thanks, Selena. <laughs> Thanks, Selena. <laughs> Our Godfather patron shout out for today is Miranda Hutley. Miranda has signed up to our Godfather tier patronage, which gives her a bonus episode every week, including the all, already she's getting a bonus episode from the regular patronage. She gets to pick it. Yeah. And she gets a free sticker sent to her from us, as well as access to the monthly Zoom call with us. Miranda, On the we, day made of you, wedding. we made you an offer you couldn't and refuse. You Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> I feel like our Godfather impersonation is <laughs> getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miranda. <laughs> On this day in film history, today is Monday, February 28th in 1997. Donnie Brasco was released. In 2003, Cradle to the Grave was released. The X gonna <laughs> give it to you. 2020, The Invisible Man was released. And happy birthday to John Turturro, who we will be seeing tomorrow night in the Batman man at our early screening at IMAX cannot wait to see that movie had to get the, the drop <laughs> so today <laughs> I gotta, I gotta stop this. today James we we're just talking and James just goes I haven't been able to stop thinking about the Batman at all all day every day I'm like Jesus you have a problem no you're you, like I can't stop thinking about the Batman no no that's yeah you got a little wrong you got a little wrong I said because we actually just booked a trip to Europe Anthony's never been so he's we're finally going he was supposed to go before COVID but that obviously didn't happen but we're finally getting him to Italy and obviously some other countries so I said after, since we booked this Europe trip there's finally something I can think about besides the Batman because that's all I've been thinking about yeah so now I think about two things <laughs> You have a problem. Uh, my stream recommendation, since we're seeing the Batman tomorrow night, it's getting released this week. I recommend watching The Lighthouse on Amazon or Good Time or The King on Netflix or Rent High Life. So this you can see Pattinson's great performances and great roles rather than people always just thinking he's just from Twilight. And The Rover and Cosmopolis yeah. are really great too. Yeah. My streaming recommendation is I Heart Huckabees. Uh, just added on to Amazon Prime, directed and written by the great... David O. Russell with an amazing stacked cast. All right. I bet you thought we were done with cameos, but we're, we're, we're not even we're halfway through. We we're still got some close. great ones. So let's la lead it off again. Part two of this episode with part two, part two with Kate Blanchett in Hot Fuzz. Great cameo. Super funny film. You don't even see her face in this role. You just see her. She's one of the crime scene investigators, forensic analysts in this, the hazmat suit with the mask and the goggles. And this is where her and um, Simon, Peck Simon break Peck's up. character yeah. break up. Really, really great. And, and I and all you do is hear her voice. And like the first time I saw it, I was like, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And then when you watch it again, you're like, oh my God, that's totally Kate Blanchett. <laughs> uh, a great cameo in um, r the Robert Altman masterpiece, The Player, which stars Tim Robbins. So Tim Robbins plays a movie agent and he's trying to get like a movie made. And he's trying to get Bruce Willis and Julia Roberts to, to star in the movie. And he keeps name dropping them all over town. And then at the end of the movie, I'm not gonna, I won't tell you what happens at the end, but at the end of the movie, uh, the movie does get made, and, and, and then we see a scene of the movie with Bruce Willis and Julia Roberts. It's really funny. It's great. So that's a great cameo for both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have Eminem, who's got a couple great cameos. Uh, first up was Funny People, where he plays himself. And he's talking to Adam Sandler's character in that movie, and, and they're really great friends in real yeah. life. So that it's a, it's so fun to watch. And he's they're talking about how he's like, you had an out, like you could have just died of cancer, and you had your out, but like now you're stuck here. Like I I I wish I had an out. Like I can't go anywhere. I can't go to Walmart. I can't go to Kmart. <laughs> he's and then Ray's just staring at Ray him. <laughs> do you want to f me? Hey Ray. Hey Ray. Ray, do you want to f me? <laughs> And then he's also in the interview, the James Franco, Seth Rogen movie, where he's on their TV show and he outs himself as being homosexual casually, like in conversation about the lyrics. He's like, I've been leading a trail of breadcrumbs for everybody. I'm surprised nobody figured it out yet. <laughs> I am attracted to men. <laughs> Did Eminem uh, just come out as gay on uh, our show? Did Eminem just come out as gay on our show? 
I like men. <laughs> Someone's gonna make an edit of that. <laughs> Next up, we have we have another hot fuzz cameo. Uh, Peter Jackson, the great film director, actually has a cameo in this film when there's a quick montage of Simon Pegg's character working in the city as a cop, and th there's a shot of him getting stabbed in the hand by a sa a drunken Santa Claus on the street. It's actually Peter Jackson stabbing him in the hand. It's great. <laughs> he's got a, a couple. Of, is, he's got a cameo in Lord of the Rings too, right? I think he's just Peter Lord, or somewhere somewhere. He's else. in Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's in just, the Hobbit too. He's just in like the background. Yeah. All right. Uh, who's who we got next? Dustin Hoffman in The Holiday, so the great romantic film and iconic. Yeah, oh, iconic, terrific. Hans Zimmer did the music. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when Kate Winslet and Jack Black are in the blockbuster, well, it's a movie rental store, but it's a blockbuster, and they're talking about The Graduate. In the background, you can see Dustin Hoffman is shopping the aisle of the rental store. It's looking at them when they mention The Graduate. So it's a great, great cameo. Then we have Mike Myers in Bohemian Rhapsody. He plays the record store owner. Is that, is that his character? Not record store, the record owner. Oh, the, the record, the record owner. Um, company, the company owner. owner. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then he also has a cameo in Inglorious Bastards, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I so love he, that. He plays he's the really funny. He's like a that. captain or, or, some, or general, and that's the scene where Churchill is in the corner, too, with Fast Bender. Very good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Brief him. <laughs> and then Alice Cooper uh, has a great cameo in Wayne's World, uh, basically playing himself. And then Brett Favre. In there's Brett something Favre. Brett Favre, Favre. In there's something about Mary. It's great because you think that it's like she, people keep mentioning Brett and Mary keeps mentioning Brett. And you think it's just going to be just some guy named Brett. But then at the end of the film, it's Brett Favre, the quarterback. <laughs> and it's amazing. It just plays on the concept of there's something about Mary. Like yeah. everyone's in love with Mary, even a Super Bowl quarterback. And at the, at the time, Favre was the biggest football player, the biggest he star. He just won the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, he's the biggest star in the NFL for yeah. sure. And it's, it's a great it's a great movie. He's, oh, dude, that movie! The classic. opening of that movie, man, so oh damn God. funny. And Matt Dillon's so funny too. The zippers, yeah. yeah. We should watch that soon. Yeah. It's so good. Uh, next up, we have Ed Sheeran, who has a cameo in Game of Thrones. It's great. Right? And yeah, Aaron yeah. Rodgers has a cameo in Game of yeah, Thrones yeah. too. Well, Aaron Rodgers is just like some person running away from a, an explosion, but Ed Sheeran actually has dialogue with Arya, Arya Stark, and she sits down with a few soldiers who are having a. a Sitting at a campfire. Yeah. We only had brought up. We only did a couple shows, just like enormous shows like Game of Thrones. And I believe he sings in the scene. If, correct me if I'm wrong. I Does think he? he sings. I think so. Can't, Can't remember. remember. Yeah, like a little campfire tune. All right, moving on. Next up, we have Keanu in Always Be My Maybe. He's hilarious in this movie. It's a pretty funny movie. Ali Wong. Um, uh, I think she wrote it. And Randall Park. Yeah. yeah. And so he Keanu plays himself. But he's dating Ali's character in the movie, and it's it's hysterical because he just, they're it's like a ridiculous version of himself. Yeah, they're like waiting for her boyfriend to show up, and she's like, "Oh, you're gonna love him." And then he shows up. It's just Keanu walking in slow motion into this <laughs> restaurant. Everyone's like, "It's Keanu Reeves." She's like, "I know." And it, there's that scene where he's drinking the wine and listening to the different uh, things in his headphone. Yeah, it's pretty he silly. Starts weeping. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Johnny Depp in Twenty One Jump Street. He starred in the show, obviously, uh, as a young actor, and so he has a great cameo in this. In this movie, he plays one of the bikers that uh, they're talking to when they're trying to arrest them for drugs. <laughs> and he ends up being an undercover cop yeah, yeah. You when know, they take off their disguises at yeah. the end. It, it seemed fitting that he would be in it. Yeah. Next up, we have Hugh Jackman in X-Men First Class when Xavier and um, Magneto are looking for mutants to join up with them. They they go to well, they go to find Logan in a bar. And when they, they both stand on either side of Logan, who's drinking um, at the bar, and they do a, a quick little pitch, and then he just, he just quickly says, fuck off. <laughs> go <laughs> f*** yourself. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, go f*** yourself. <laughs> he's like smoking a cigar and doing a shot of whiskey, and then they turn around and leave. It's really great. And that was the only stipulation that Hugh Jackman would do that is if he got to say that line. That's great. Which is so iconic. Something he would say. It's perfect for Logan, it yeah. really is. Next, we have Margot Robbie in The Big Short. So The Big Short actually used a few different uh, actors and celebrities. So it was Margot Robbie and then um, Anthony Bourdain as well as a chef yeah. to help explain some of the complex ideas of what happened during that financial crisis. Yeah, it was a great, great use of the cameo to explain complicated jargon. And honestly, uh, Margot Robbie in a bathtub might have just took taking your mind off of it even more. <laughs> honestly, for me, I was like, wait, I wasn't listening at all. <laughs> What'd she say? And I love when she's like, all right, get the 
fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, Anchorman 2, which has the amazing second battle between the anchors. And you have people like <laughs> Will Smith and Tim Robbins. And Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Amazing, amazing. Ben Stiller. So funny. It's really, really great. Yeah. And then uh, Ted 2, we have the GOAT, Tom Brady. Where uh, Ted and Mark Wahlberg are trying to steal his semen. <laughs> <laughs> so their plan is to sneak into Tom Brady's home, jerk him off while he's sleeping, and then get his... <laughs> like, I love that. I, I love Casey listening right now. I was yeah. like, I have a shirt of that. And, uh, <laughs> it's just the concept of that. Like, we're going to go get his semen, but what? You're going <laughs> to jerk him off while he's sleeping? <laughs> but I love that they sneak into his house. He's asleep, and they lift up the blanket, and it's like the eyes of God. It's like a bright light. It's is like shining. Pulp Fiction briefcase. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. so great. It, it's it's so funny. <laughs> and then he kicks, the, so he, th- he throws Mark Wahlberg off the balcony and then he throws Ted at him. And, he, he, and, he, and then Mark goes, wow, the perfect spiral. <laughs> well, yeah, because he spins perfectly. He spins, yeah. <laughs> oh my funny. God. All right. Also, Tom Brady has a cameo in Stuck on You, mm-hmm. which is a pretty funny comedy. I like that movie. Yeah. It's, for, it's Ty Law, too. It, it, no, it's uh, Laurie Malloy. Oh, sorry, Malloy. So it's, it's uh, he, and Brady's like a computer nerd or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty good. But, but, Aside from the cameo, speaking of Tom Brady, because we love the guy, <laughs> he's so he's retired and his he just announced his first film project. He's producing a movie and he's gonna be having he's gonna be cameoing in it as well. It's called uh, Eighty for Brady and it's gonna star four legendary actresses: Lily Tomlin, Sally Field, Jane Fonda, and oh, someone else. Who else is uh, Rita Moreno? And it's about these uh, four older women who go to see a Tom Brady football game. And wow. like in the road trip, they go on to see the game. That must be. I bet that's funny. Yeah. So they just announced it today. He's gonna play himself. I wonder it's, if it's gonna be at Buccaneers Stadium or, may, or yeah, New England. I wonder. Or Foxborough. Yeah, it depends on the script, but it, it'll be a lot of fun. I, I think, think it depends on what Tom wants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a really smart move. It sounds really fun. It sounds like just like a, a cute comedy, and it's a great cast. Like that's an amazing cast. Smart. All these all these athletes are just starting production companies. Yeah. Wicked, wicked smart kid. Next up, we have a great funny cameo. It's real quick. It's in Jurassic World, the first of the new ones, and it's when the the dinosaurs are attacking everyone at the at the theme park, the amusement park, and Jimmy Buffett is in the crowd and he grabs some margaritas and runs away from the dinosaurs. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> Hello, Margarita. <laughs> Next up, we have Star Wars: Force Awakens. The stormtrooper that is guarding Rey while she's strapped down to that chair before Kylo shows up. After, after Kyle leaves, I mean, is played by Daniel Craig. They were filming at Leavesden Studio, the Bond film Skyfall, at the same time as Force Awakens. And so he just popped in set. JJ was like, hey, you want to be a stormtrooper in the scene? And so if you listen to that voice in that scene, it is 100% Daniel Craig. And then we have Anchorman, the original, the first one. We have a great cameo <laughs> from the original. <laughs> There's only two. I love this one. <laughs> There's Jack Black on the motorcycle, and he kicks Baxter <laughs> off the bridge. You, the man! He took off! And he, he, he kicked, kicked him! He, he punted him! I am mean, in a glass box of emotion! I'm in a case of emotion! <laughs> you destroyed the only thing I love. Now I'm going to destroy the thing you love most. <laughs> I love burritos, but boy, this sure is filling. <laughs> he the what, what, do you love more than the, what do you love more than anything else in the world? Well, I love like a nice warm glass of scotch and my good friend Baxter here. <laughs> <laughs> the man? He punched him! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Out of the way! I gotta do the news! <laughs> I've got to do the news! <laughs> oh my god. We just do an entire episode of, we of, gotta re- do Anchorman. of referencing Anchorman. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Next up, we have Iron Man 2, which has a great cameo from. Elon Musk, while he was still building his empire, um, but he was still regarded as a genius billionaire, and he has a great cameo hanging out. Like, he says hi to Tony Stark, and Tony Stark is like, yeah, okay, whatever, <laughs> like Tony Stark would do. All right, uh, next one we have is Jim Carrey in Liar Liar. So he's the lead actor in this movie, obviously, but he also has a cameo 
where there is a scene with firefighters in the background and Jim Carrey he's not in the scene as <laughs> as the act as the character he's just in a firefighter outfit with doing like a a big Jim Carrey smile at camera like looking into camera <laughs> it's like his ex-wife and the son and the like, like the wannabe stepdad are talking yeah. to like police he's just like cheesing in the back <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this I saw, I saw the photo today it's I was, so I was funny. dying it's so ridiculous he's literally looking in lens <laughs> <laughs> this big goofy smile <laughs> it's great. Oh man. It's great. Ne- it's great. <laughs> Fairly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up we have Die Hard. There is an amazing Richard Pryor cameo when the uh, SWAT teams are and en- are approaching the skyscraper the Nakatomi Plaza. There's a shot of Richard Pryor <laughs> dressed up in one of the outfits, and he he like bumps into a thorn bush or something. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's it. It's like two seconds. And Not it's gone. even. It's like yeah. it's like three frames. It's so funny. He's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Nathan Fillion, who has a cameo in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume One. He voices that huge inmate at the prison when they show up before Rocket and Groot just take him out and make him their B. Oh yeah, big time. Next up, we have Chuck Palahniuk in Choke, the book he wrote, which was adapted into this film starring Sam Rockwell. He has a scene in that. Um, he does not have a scene in Fight Club, though. Yeah, and in in, Ch- in Choke, he is on the plane sitting next to uh, the character that Sam Rockwell plays. Mm. Next, we have Hunter S. Thompson in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. In this, obviously, the stars... Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro and Johnny Depp basically he plays Hunter S. Thompson and they were good friends in real life and it's just a version of him yeah, a version, yeah. and it's just an incredible performance the, the outfit he wears is literally what Hunter S. Thompson yeah. wore every day so it's just he actually looks like him yeah kind of with the bald head yeah and it's just a really great movie it's a wild it's a guy it's a trip if you ever read anything about that guy like the lifestyle that guy lived was crazy like he, the amount of drugs and alcohol he would drink every day is absurd it's wild next up we have Harry Styles in The Rise of Skywalker, he played a stormtrooper in one scene. And then the final cameo is also Rise of Skywalker is Lin-Manuel Miranda. He plays, I believe he's like a rebel soldier. I think. Rebel soldier running on a battlefield. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. no, no, no. He's, um th- during the celebration, he's in the background, like, like hugging people and laughing gotcha. for, for winning. He's got like a little mustache. I guess, yeah. Like yeah. a little, little, like a mustache. little, little, little mustache. It's just a little mustache. It's like tiny, like a, if you're li- like in the galaxy far, far away, like it's like a tiny <laughs> mustache. <laughs> all right. That's all of our cameos, right? Yeah, that's all of them. Wow. That's a that, ton. That's, a t- that's like 80 cameos. Wait, what's this one? X Men in Room. Oh, oh, so that's Deadpool 2 uh-huh. when uh, he's making it's a, the joke, the yeah. meta joke about how they can't afford any other X-Men. And the, there's the door open and like the Beast set, closes like, it. Quicksilver's yeah. in there. Beast. See Xavier. So, yeah. Is Xavier in there? I think so, yeah. Uh, I think possibly. And then the Beast, co- Beast just closes it and like hopes he doesn't get noticed. It's <laughs> great. Uh, that's the last one. Yeah. yeah all right. So, and that's, yeah, I think we got them that's all. a lot of cameos. That was a fun one. If we missed any, let us know what we missed and we'll try to. We didn't miss anything. Bring it up uh, some other time. But also James Cameron's hands in Titanic. I guess that's kind of a cameo. I said no to that one. (laughs) He did say no. All right, that wraps our cameo episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you had a good time with this one. It was a blast. Y'all take care. Enjoy seeing the Batman, which is getting released this week. We're going to go see it three times this week, and episode will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that. I don't know why I'm promoting an episode on an episode, but I'm just very excited. Go for it, man. Just very excited. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you're new. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Find us on all audio streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find us. Find us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to check out one of these other videos right here for more content on our favorite films and breaking down all kinds of movie content. Thanks so much.